a serious Bible study from Book of Acts, actually. Uh, let's not give any interruption in between. So we'll go continuously till we finish the uh, whole book. Um, so in Acts, uh, first chapter to five chapters today, Every uh, Wednesday, we will do five chapters in a day. Um, so if you can uh, take your Bibles and notebooks and uh, you can write down just the important points in these chapters. And uh, after this, you can do a study. Uh, you can read chapter by chapter later on, you know. Um, but uh, here, when in the Acts chapter one, you you need to know when this uh, uh, taken place, like at the time, the period, that that's very important for us to know when was it happening, that event was happening that time, because when you know the time, then you will have a better understanding uh, about uh, things. So it was like around uh, two months around nearly two months after the uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, because Jesus, uh, uh, how, how long he stayed on the earth after resurrection? 40 days, right? 40 days he was uh, uh, on appearing to disciples and on and off, on and off. It's not continuously he was there with them, but... Uh, uh, he was just appearing and uh, disappearing and he was uh, spending some time with them and teaching them the word. Like that, it happened 40 days. So after 40 days, he uh, ascended to heaven. So after that, after that, they went to the upper room to pray, right? Maybe, you know, I don't know how long they prayed. They must have prayed maybe 10 days or a week time or, you know, so... After that, Holy Spirit fell upon them. So then everything started happening. After Holy Spirit poured up, out upon them, then what um, we are going to study today, all those events took place. So it means uh, uh, in people's minds, it was very fresh. That uh, crucifixion was very fresh in everybody's mind. So it means, you know, 40 days there and uh, 10 days, uh, it means 50 days. And maybe afterwards, you know, it started happening. So in uh, uh, nearly two months, that's what I'm saying. So around in two months time, so things started happening. So you notice something here, um, when Holy Spirit fell upon them, it was so much that this, this, so much um, noise, so much noise happened. Like um, till that time, um, it was quiet and uh, it's not coming in the public. Nothing happened, nothing uh, more uh, superficial. But after Holy Spirit fell upon them, nothing hidden after that. Everything was in open public it's, it's in the light, you know. See why? Because when Holy Spirit fell upon them, there's so much noise. They started speaking in tongues. And there's so much of a, a sound of wind. So because of that sound of the wind, and, and, and there's so much the sounds from the upper room, and people all rushed from everywhere to see what's happening there. Right. So uh, that's what, uh, you know, I remember when I was, I was uh, doing this study, I remember Jesus telling, you know, in, a, uh, in the Gospels, he was telling to people, you know, uh, everybody born of the, who is born of the spirit is like this. You know, um, we can hear this wind, but no one would be able to say, uh, wind, where is wind going? It, where is it's coming like it means uh, no one can see wind but everybody knows there is wind why because there's so much uh, effects of wind there 
you know you see the leaves are moving things moving even you feel on your skin you know so many things you you can say there is wind even though you don't see the wind right in the same way holy spirit that's what jesus mentioned those who born of the spirit is like the the person like the wind like you know holy spirit came upon them there's so many things started happening so we don't see holy spirit right we don't see holy spirit but do you see how many things started happening the effect of holy spirit the work of holy spirit there right first thing the wind sound they heard and then the speaking in tongues it's a work of the holy spirit they all started speaking in tongues and different languages they were speaking so not only that it happened and uh, what happened uh, all those people came and peter stood up peter stood up and all of a sudden very fearful peter and got that boldness to stand in front of everybody and uh, started preaching there that was another miracle who oh, peter speaking preaching is another miracle happened so you see these are all the effects of holy spirit the work of the holy spirit you need to understand how how do you how do you recognize the work of the holy spirit right and um, then uh, when peter was preaching all of a sudden you know he started quoting scriptures uh, from the old testament you know um see he could relate he could relate what was happening that time immediately holy spirit god brought memory to him the scripture which was mentioned in the old testament in the book of joel about when holy spirit fell upon like a, is i will pour out my spirit upon all the flesh he, that word is says like that right upon all flesh because uh, that was the scripture peter was quoting and uh, how, how that's that's what the work of the holy spirit you know you know because it's always confirmed with the scriptures always holy spirit god never never leave you um in uh, without a scripture if something he is doing he always confirm that with the scripture only so peter got the scripture right away at that time is not there was not a preparation for him nothing but that time scripture he got and he said um i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh you know what you are seeing today it is already written in the book of joel the prophet joel prophesied about this right so it's very important for them to know that upon all flesh because till that time the presence of god only priest were enjoying only priest were allowed to enter into the presence and enjoy the presence of god but now he said upon all flesh now so the holy spirit fell upon everybody now it's not priest everybody and he's saying that daughters your sons your daughters also means no age no age limit for holy spirit everybody that's what he meant to say upon all flesh means and also he's saying that your born servants men and women also will receive holy spirit it means is not for israelites only it was not just for israelites is for everybody like you know for them they they used to have servants from gentile right and that's why that insist was given there so everybody means everybody will have that uh, presence of holy spirit right and um, in he quoted the scripture uh, um they were all hearing and then he started sharing he saw the crowd there right who were all came they were all the jews only and in the when he was giving them the gospel 
he brought the word in a way that they can understand how because jews they know the word they they know old testament that's why he was bringing quoting scriptures from the old testament about jesus right and uh, you know um, he was saying uh, interesting two scriptures there like he was saying that um uh, uh you know remember david like a king david they all know king david right so uh, king david remember king david was saying you know um uh, as i saw um uh, my lord my lord telling uh, my lord telling to my lord <laughs> you know this to sit at the right hand let's uh, read that word um acts uh, chapter 2 um acts chapter 2 verse 25 onwards i saw the lord always in my presence for he is at my right hand and so that i will not be shaken therefore my heart was glad and my tongue exalted moreover my flesh also will live in hope he was telling right he was talking about himself who this is about david david mentioned in his psalms this scripture so because he was saying that i am very glad and you know in the presence of god i have a hope now why there is hope for him he was saying because you will not abandon my soul to hades nor allow your holy one to undergo decay you have so he was speaking about because he was a prophet david was also called as a prophet because he was a prophet and he know what's going to happen it means that time he saw resurrection of jesus christ that time that time jesus was not even born right but david it revealed to david because he was a prophet was revealed to him about um, the one who is coming from his womb right because another scripture also says that uh, the descendants of david i will let him sit on the throne of david and rule forever that was another scripture it means david always have a descendants sitting on the throne always like uh, uh, even though there's so many battles kings gone through but his tribe is judah right is uh, uh, david belong to tribe of judah and in his tribe always god promised to david in your descendants there will be always a king sitting on the throne and he rules forever so he was talking about who can rule forever because humans we are all men men die men have limited period of uh, life span right but here your descendant will sit on the throne rule forever means who can rule forever only jesus jesus is only right he can rule forever so god already promised to david about in his descendants jesus is going to born right he was revealed and he was saying that now you know i i have a hope now why because um god you you are not going to leave my soul in the hades and you are not going to let your holy one decay undergo decay it means that is about he say me but he says that my womb right my son he was saying like that he will never undergo decay and you are not going to leave him in the sheol right in so it means the hades it means that's what exactly happened no god raised him up from the dead yes jesus went into the hades but god never left him in the hades and he was risen from there right that's why he's saying that his body never decayed even his body buried body the old body disappeared but never undergone decay and is risen with a new body right so 
the whole thing was revealed to david already in back then how many years ago before this whole thing happened right and so now he's bringing all those scriptures now peter is bringing do you see something you know later on they say this uneducated and peter and he was not trained and not educated how come he knows everything the knowledge what he had because these things were not revealed to pharisees teachers of the law they were all their life they were teaching and they were reading the word but it was not revealed to them it was revealed to peter that's why they were surprised to see how come peter got all this knowledge right okay so now the my point is here peter saw the crowd and brought that kind of uh, um, uh, references so that they understand better but if the same way we cannot bring the gospel in the same way to the gentiles they don't know all these things they don't know who david was they don't know the scriptures about old testament so we had to see the crowd from what background they were coming accordingly we have to bring the gospel so peter was connecting these things now you know so and about jesus he was mentioned and another scripture he was quoting you know was 34 he says the law oh, for it was not david who ascended into heaven but he himself says the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand until i make your enemies a footstool for your feet you know so he was saying all that the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand the lord means what god said to my lord his lord means who jesus <laughs> you know so even though that's going to born in his line but he is calling him as a lord my lord is not calling oh my son no he is addressing him as my lord so god lord said to my lord okay and sit at my right hand till until i make your enemies footstool for your feet it means he he came to know that he is going to rise up and he is going to sit with the father he is going to sit with the father right and with the at the right hand and then until what time he is going to sit there till all the enemies come as a footstool for him it means he was sitting there waiting for something to happen what to happen who is going to do that work he is expecting us to do that he is sitting there waiting for us to do what is that to do that because he got the victory he overcame the satan he overcame satan he got the victory over satan but he is waiting his people to go and handcuff him handcuff him and bring him to put him under the feet of jesus <laughs> you know so like is is it is like that you know i got i overcame the, all the power of satan that's what jesus meant i overcame what all power he had he threw it upon me right all the power of satan he threw it upon me on the cross on the cal on the calvary on that day i overcame everything i overcame death what he could do what he could do ultimately what he could do death only he he even put death on me but i overcame death so all the power of the devil finished i overcame now i'm waiting what i'm waiting now since i overcame everything i want my people to go and handcuff him now bind him now bind him because you have to go in my name jesus name right that's what he we fi go in his name because remember one thing you did not overcome i did not overcome who overcame jesus overcame 
So we need to go in the name of Jesus. Then only Satan will be bound. Right? So when you say the name of Jesus, Satan knows very well. Why? Because he was utterly defeated by Jesus, by that name. So that is why even though today Jesus is not with us physically, but we can go in the name of Jesus. We can use his name, right? And then we can go in the presence of Jesus with his presence. He is with us in spirit. He is with us. So we can go in the name of Jesus, in the presence of Jesus, with his presence, if you go and you can bind him. And because if you go, what happens? All the power of the devil already defeated is going to be defeated before you also. Because you are going in my name. Okay? So then, bind him, destroy every work. That's what it means. Handcuff him, handcuff him bring him means what? Binding the works of the devil. Destroying the works of the devil, that means putting the devil as a footstool for Jesus. That's what it means. God, he is waiting for that to happen so that he can come back. He's waiting for that. When his people, the church does that work, thus he will come back. So he said all this. And what he's saying that you know, remember all this he quoted and telling that one. David mentioned, talked about that one. That Jesus, this Jesus now. That one you crucified. Such a beautiful he brought. And with the scriptures, he brought the gospel. And at the end, he mentioned that one, that Lord. God, David said, Lord. That Lord you crucified today. Then when he said that word, that word cut their hearts, pierced their hearts. I'm telling you today, whenever you bring the scriptures like that, the work of the Holy Spirit is going to happen. It will cut the hearts of people. And remember Jesus said also to disciples, before he was leaving, he said this word, you know, I will send you, I will give you comforter, another counselor, Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will convict the world. He will convict the world about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Exactly those three things happened that time. When, that is the work of the, when Peter was preaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that is why it cut their hearts. You know, how do you recognize a word is coming from Holy Spirit? A preaching, a sermon is coming from Holy Spirit because it is going to cut the hearts. It brings conviction into a heart. You can recognize that word is not from a human mouth. It's coming. It is coming from Holy Spirit only. Okay. And then and convict, convicted them about the sin. The sin. That is why they were asking how they suddenly opened their eyes. Oh my God, we killed him. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. We crucified him. That's why it, it really cut them. And they said, how shall we be saved now? What a terrible sin we committed, right? And convicting them about sin and convicting them about righteousness. About what is righteousness here? Jesus is the righteousness of God. He risen and he is with the Father. That is what he was. They were, they were proving that Jesus is righteousness of God. That's why he's risen. And is with the Father now. That is what convicting the world about righteousness. And the third thing he said, judgment. So what is judgment here? Is that who is judged? Who is judged? Who is defeated? Satan. 
Satan was defeated and he was judged. So uh, Satan was judged and uh, uh, um, that's why, uh, how do you know that now uh, Satan is judged now? Why? Because till that time, till that time they were under the control of Satan only, till that time their minds were bound by the teachings of wrong teachings, right? The minds were bound, their eyes were closed and that was the work of the Satan. Suddenly, Minds were opened that the that the enemy casted out. That's what it happened. When enemy casted out, and then the people opened their eyes to see the truth, the lies suddenly removed from them, you know. So he was judged. The devil is exposed and judged as a as a um, as a criminal, whatever it is, whatever whoever is that he's a liar, right? And he was judged there. So um three things happen that is the work of the holy spirit okay and then uh, they all became they all baptized in that day and the 3000 people and they're all added to the church and then and the work of the holy spirit did not stop there and what happened and later on you know the it's every day something is happening that's what I'm, i always say when Holy Spirit is working, there is something always happens. He's not quiet. He's not always some noise, noise happening. Something is happening. So, and um, people added and they started, you know, devoted themselves to the teachings and all that happening. And uh, every day they're coming and they're, together one one accord and all praying so many things happening and then there is one lame beggar and healing happened you know that a beggar was healed right so that's what happens when holy spirit is there and healing started happening and when he was healed when holy, when he, the man was healed that bring more surprise now that that again um, brought so much movement among people you know for some it's a good moment for some it is a disturbing moment you know but for some for people who wanted healing people who wanted jesus for them it's a good moment holy spirit work but for some who do not want for them it's a disturbing moment and then this healing happened. When this healing happened, so many people ran. So many other people came. Not just these 3,000. Now extra more people came now. And 5,000 people gathered now. And 5,000 people came. And everybody was looking at Peter and John. And in a, in a surprise look, you know. Because uh, um, uh, first time they were testifying uh, because they saw Jesus doing miracles. But first time, he, you know, Peter, the disciples started doing the first miracle. This is and when Jesus was there, they did. But uh, these Jews, they never testified. They never saw. I think I think now they saw Peter doing it. Peter, uh, so they were all surprised to see Peter and John. And you know, Peter saying something very nice. He said that, um, oh, reply to the people, men by our own power or piety, we had made him walk, you know. That is really, really very honest truth that he admitted there, right? That is the truth. Well, many, uh, we really have to make sure uh, that we always have to speak the truth. You know, why miracles are happening. We have to admit the truth there. So Peter was admitting the truth, you know, saying that as if something we did in our own power or in our own strength. 
why do you look at us like that you know and he, he was saying them he was telling them the verse 13 the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of our fathers has glorified his servant jesus the one whom you delivered disowned in the presence of pilate when he had decided to release him see he was presenting them a slowly gospel again because he saw 5000 people came even those 5000 also again jewish Jew, jews only so for them is presenting slowly you know why do you like he was using every opportunity healing happened okay through this healing he was presenting again gospel there you know and and he's saying you know um but you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you but put to death the prince of life the one whom god raised from the dead a fact to which we are of witnesses and uh, see he said this and on the basis of faith in his name it is the name of jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know and the faith which comes from which comes through him has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all hallelujah oh my god there is so much in this scripture you can take it so much in this scripture he is saying that in the name of jesus see i spoke the name of jesus that is why this happened to him you need to know why that happened because jesus overcame every sickness you know that right jesus overcame every disease on the cross and every power of the devil on the cross that is why i just spoke the name of jesus that disease will be terrified that sickness will be terrified when they hear the name of jesus why they were very much familiar with jesus why once they were defeated by jesus and the demons also will be terrified when they hear that name jesus right so he was saying that name in the name of jesus that this person be strengthened in the and he is saying the faith na, yes i spoke the name of jesus but also something else what is that faith our faith he was saying and also he was saying from where that faith is coming from him he was saying the faith that we received through jesus from him that faith gave him perfect health hallelujah you know how perfect health comes to us today name of jesus name of jesus is so powerful name you need to speak that name and then the second thing is that faith in that name you know people say many people say jesus jesus but no faith without faith if they speak just jesus jesus nothing happens but the faith i have in that name the faith i have in that name you know how that faith comes from where from him only jesus only gives us faith that gave perfect health to this man hallelujah we need to know the principles of i'm telling you if you know all these things you will change your life is going to change now okay and uh, now um and then he again he's saying that now brethren i know you acted in ignorance i know you did not know all these things before yes you killed him you crucified him so i know you all acted in ignorance uh, um, but um, uh, but we are witnesses because he's risen he's alive he is the one doing this now hallelujah so that's what he said there he mentioned and then you know what the word of god says everybody who heard that day that message they all believed it says you know chapter 4 verse 4 it says but many of those who had heard the message believed 
and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. You know, so uh, that's what I'm saying. If you really preach with Holy Spirit, people can believe. People can believe that word. And they all, they, they all added that day. They all saved again. 5,000 against God saved. With this, just one simple message he brought, right? And then, um, and the rulers, they heard. The, the uh, main priest, high priest, they, they heard all these things. And they were, the word says, they were very much disturbed. You know why? Because these people are um, preaching to them about resurrection of the dead, right? What they were telling that Jesus is risen. That's why Jesus is alive. Because these are the people they put him to death, right? And now he they coming here now and saying he's risen. That, that brought great fear to them. And, and now we are in problem. We are in trouble because all people are believing that. And they're filling this Jerusalem with their teachings. And they're really troubled and uh, uh, disturbed now. And then they caught them and they put them in the jail. And, you know, uh, but uh, next day, actually what happened, and they want to uh, bring them back and want to warn them. And, you know, um, but, uh, uh, okay, before that, they only warned them not uh, uh, they put them in the jail and brought them back and warned them do not preach this name Jesus again right but they say one thing you know what shall we do with this man because we cannot deny that miracle too because they did that miracle that blind that beggar that he received healing there and uh, so he, they say that word, it's really um, touched my heart. They say that, you know, um, uh, verse 16, chapter 4, verse 16, um, saying, what shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. And we cannot deny it. That's what I'm saying, you know, people have no words and people cannot oppose us if we do miracles. It's not just the uh, just saying, you know, theory, but if you can prove to them that through some miracle, through some healing, if we can prove that Jesus is alive and he's alive, he is the one who's healing people now, right? And so that's what they were proving to people that Jesus is healing this person, that they were saying, we cannot deny it, no. Yes, we are opposing them, we can, but we cannot deny this, no. Right? That's why, see, uh, remember, undeniable miracles are going to happen through us. Remember that, undeniable miracles. Then anyone can say, if you say a word, they can oppose your word, but they cannot deny the miracle. In front of their eyes, they're watching it. So um, that's how we have to present the gospel, you know. And then, um, yes, afterwards, uh, the, so they released him and they said that do not again preach. They cannot say anything to them, and but they only told them, don't preach this name Jesus again. And that's all they left them. But they say, how can we not obey God, obey you? We cannot do that, right? And they, they all gathered, they told everybody, they all gathered in one place, started praying, you know. See, when you are facing any opposition or persecution or any threats or any warnings, what, they, what did they do? They went and prayed. You know, but that's what we're supposed to do. If you hear any, if you are threatened by something, go to the church. You know, they, they together, all believers, together gathered and they start praying. You know, and the way they prayed is very, my God, this is how we need to pray. 
without a scripture they don't pray like that anything they ask god they have a word from the bible to ask so when they are praying to god they are saying god again they are quoting the scripture about david again you know david said this word what david mentioned this what is that how the rulers of the earth are coming against the holy one holy anointed one that was the word already written already david said that was chapter 4 was 25 who by the holy spirit through the mouth of our father david your servant said why did the gentiles rage and the people's devise futile things the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the lord and against his christ already said that no god how come these rulers are coming against you see how they are not coming against us because we are preaching you because we are telling them about you we are presenting you so that's why they are coming so they are actually against the holy one coming against the holy one and uh, and they said that and they said god stretch out your hand now stretch out your hand now and perform miracles that's what they say perform miracles because they know only through miracles by demonstrating the power of god they can go forward in the time of opposition that's why they were saying god stretch out you know um he is saying that where it is um was uh, 30 while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant jesus remember one thing when you are facing through the great opposition what really it really comes around for you is that the power of god that's why they were asking god stretch out your hand to do signs and wonders and miracles now and and when they prayed and they they said god give us boldness right you know um uh, in confidence now uh, verse 29 now lord take note of their threats and grant that your bond servants grant that your bond servants may speak your word with all confidence now right that's what they needed right now and they prayed what happened you know when you really pray like that with the right words and the right kind of prayer god always answers that prayer and right away what happened there was 31 when they had prayed the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit again and begin to speak the word of god with boldness hallelujah you know you, you we think that only one time it happened on the pentecostal day and they filled with holy spirit they said again they seen again holy spirit came and again it mentioned they filled with holy spirit what what is that it means every time every time when you gather and pray you need to be filled with holy spirit it is not one time experience already happened no pentecostal day now in this time in a critical time when they pray again they are filled with holy spirit means you need to keep receiving every time you need to keep filling yourself every time with holy spirit and when when holy filled them this time what they needed they received they needed boldness now to preach hallelujah and you know had god started doing wonders great that's why the word says they were in great awe the word says they were in great awe means why because there were so many wonders were happening by apostles that's why uh, people everybody in awe <laughs> you know in the church the congregation and 
and also and people brought um, the money money and nobody used to feel that oh, this is my money no such things there everybody common they put the rich people the some are rich there and the rich people they sold their lands and their houses and they brought that money so that's why the word says no one is in need there everybody was um, in content everybody uh, has their needs met you know so there's nobody there was a need in some person no because of enough money there you know and so that time uh, anania sapira is a chapter 5 it says anania sapira also a couple there and so first they thought in their heart you know they have a land they thought that okay we are going to give this to god right we sell this and going to give this to god so when they made that decision to give it to god it's already belong to god when you make an oath like that in your heart i'm going to give this to god it means in your heart you already given that to god right then after after selling it then he got an evil desire to keep some and give some <laughs> you know so remember one thing when you make such kind of decisions in your heart you know when i get this money i'm going to give it to god you know god when you bless me or when you give me this money i'm going to give this to church i'm going to give this to god like that we 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 think that nobody is watching you yes god is watching you holy spirit god is hearing those um, those uh, decisions choice you are making in your heart so they also did the same thing that is why it was it became a sinful why after you said it to god then again you changed your mind he got an evil desire once he got the money and then putting some and giving some portion then peter came to know you lied to holy spirit that's what he said you lied to holy spirit you did not lie to man but you lied to holy spirit you know when the land was with you you know that how much money you got you know that but why did you why did you lie because he asked them you know is this the money you got he said yes he lied why you do you are tempted to lie to the holy spirit you know and then he said uh, um uh, you you will be today they will take you they will it, immediately he died on the spot and the young men there they come they came and they took the body and then after 3 hours wife comes and she da, she did not know what happened she just walked in after 3 hours and then peter asked her again you know um is is the money you you got she says yes and she also lied you know and then he says the men who will carry the your husband's body is going to carry you ha ah, that's it the word on the spot she dropped dead that brought fear to the whole church they never seen these things before like this just peter speaking a word and they they died there right and the fear of god came upon people that day and so uh, but um, the are the people um, who just wanted to harm them they could not join the church they could not people with like you know um, have a different agenda to destroy the church or destroy people or destroy their faith those people could not join them that's what the word says they could not they could not dare to join them but everybody who believed in jesus everybody they all joined and every day the new people were joining to the church and church started increasing every day you know so <clears throat> then uh, uh, afterwards and uh, they these uh, again the priest they were all um, uh, become angry again and because uh, the church started increasing 
in numbers and um, so and they got hold of them and this time they pu put them in the jail they put them in the jail and but what happened that night itself uh, angel comes angel comes to them and opens the door the prison door and brought them out and says go go into the temple courts and preach now preach to them so they go they go and this kind of experiences you know angelic angelic beings coming and interacting with humans and working with human beings in bringing the gospel to people working along with us this is amazing experience like angels working along with us Uh, in bringing the gospel is amazing like this kind of experiences we needed again these days again you know so uh, they were brought by angel this is a supernatural miracle you know we think that oh god you change the hearts of people god let them release lord all, all these things but we don't expect this kind of miracle supernatural release right from now onwards take note of these things we can even pray like this we can even pray no human interference is needed to release anybody angels can go when we pray angels can go and release them and uh, and they were brought out and they went there and they started preaching and they they these rulers right they were waiting for them to be um, stand before and be tri trial right but but they were not there they were so surprised how come these people disappeared they were not there right they were so surprised and but they found that these people are preaching there and then uh, you know um so um so they heard what they were preaching and there was they were asking them questions you know questions and then they say because you are asking us because of this miracle happened to this man this uh, uh, that uh, um, that beggar received healing so well being of this man and hear this and they started giving them the gospel again you know and they were all filled with jealousy jealousy it says that you know word was 17 uh, but the high priest rose up along with all his associates and they were filled with jealousy you know and i want to say something here you know what is the difference between rulers pharisees teachers of the law and same word they read and same word peter also read disciples also read the same book is same no they were reading same book but why there is a difference in their teachings totally they were contradicting each other teachings but peter and all of them holy spirit god is teaching them the word and whereas for rulers pharisees how they were learning the word their own mind they were not depending on holy spirit because they don't believe in jesus how can they have experience of holy spirit because they don't believe in jesus right that that brought a contradiction between both teachings so that religious teachings means pharisees teachings which comes from their own knowledge which comes from their own human mind but a knowledge the wisdom coming from holy spirit is a truth so uh, then okay and that's why they contradict each other and here uh, they were so angry and mad and they want to kill them actually that time there's a one uh, teacher a pharisee teacher of the law his name uh, gamaliel gamaliel he rose up and he he said one thing you know you know because it's going to be a big violence there violence is going to rise up there so he he wants to stop it and he said something you know before these people 
this before someone uh, someone else also came like this and something he brought some movement like this some teaching he brought people all 400 people somebody people followed him but later on he perished he was killed and all those people scattered and another man rose up after him another man came and he brought some movement in the teaching he brought some people many people followed and he also perished and people also scattered like this if these people also coming like that something coming with their own their own teachings their own theory it will not last it will not last same thing is going to happen to them they will be killed or they will be perished and people now they're all following their teachings they will also scatter but but if they are bringing the teachings from god suppose if they are bringing it from god you won't be able to stop it in fact if you are fighting them you are actually fighting against god not them when he said that that really convinced everybody and everybody became quiet and they left that's true that man said with so much of wisdom he said that is exactly true i'm telling you today if a if a person start doing ministry with their own with their own mind oh i'm going to start a church oh i'm going to it's if it is not coming from god if that vision that call is not coming from god they cannot last just out of emotion they do some work for some time but when the attacks happening they cannot stand the attack of the devil because it is not coming from god it's coming from human suppose if that ministry if that vision is coming from god under opposition under attacks it actually increases more than before but no one will be able to stop it no one i'm telling you if any ministry coming from god no one would be able to stop that ministry this early church people tried tried pharisees they tried no matter how much they tried they increased but they could not stop the church hallelujah five chapters done praise god uh, next week five more chapters yes is god speaking to you today is god speaking to you is there anything that you felt that you really needed this word you know and if god spoken to you anything you can speak now you can talk it was good yeah alpha <laughs> praise god <laughs> yeah i liked it yeah and it is true until it comes from <clears throat> him mm. it does not happen yes so so yes i am also encouraged by this um, uh, this acts of act and uh, i really one thing really really um, stuck me is today is that what peter 